There is a brand new prompting guide from Meta, the company behind Facebook and Instagram. And there are seven prompting techniques in there that I think are gonna be really useful if you use any kind of a chatbot. So if you use ChatGPT, Claude, Copilot, this is written for Meta. So Meta has a large language model called Llama 2, but this applies across all the large language models. So I went through this documentation and I simplified it and I came up with my own prompting examples because this is really designed for developers that are creating applications on top of Llama 2. But you could again use it across any kind of AI chatbot and large language models. They all have the same principles. So I'm gonna simplify it for us so we could use it inside of ChatGPT again with some prompting examples. And there's seven really good prompting techniques that I think most people should be aware of. Okay, so the first prompting technique is explicit instructions. So basically giving it more detail and being more explicit on the instruction on the prompt rather than just doing an open-ended prompt. So here's some examples to change the style of the output. Explain this to me like a topic on a children's educational network show. Or this one here, we'll talk more about this role setting, but I'm a software engineer and using large language models for summarization. Summarize the following text under 250 words. So this is basically telling you the more detail you give these prompts, the better results. And that's all part of this stylizing. And then you also have formatting as part of this detailed instruction. So using bullet point formats or JSON objects, this is more for developers. Use less technical terms that help me apply it to my work and communication. So you get the idea here with the type of formatting that you could give it. So then you could use restrictions. So you could do things like this. Never use a source that's older than 2020. So this way it will force it to try to maybe do a search. Like if you're using GPT-4, do a web search to only search for things that are more new based on what you're using it for. And maybe older data is not relevant to what you're writing about. Or if you don't know the answer, just say you don't know the answer. This is basically a way to get it to not hallucinate because these models do sometimes just make up the answer. So you could get around it with these type of restrictions. Okay, so that's all part of the first thing they shared with us, which is explicit instructions in these three parts. The second prompting technique that Meta shared is called zero shot prompting. So this is another prompting technique that you could use. And if you haven't heard of this before, Basically, all zero-shot prompting means is you don't provide any previous examples. You just ask ChatGPT or whatever large language model you're using to basically just give you a response. So you could say, write a blog post about the latest trends in social media marketing for small businesses. It has no previous example to pull from, so it really just knows that prompt. That's called zero-shot prompting. No previous examples or no prompt priming. I'm gonna explain that in a second with the next one. Here's another example. Explain the basic of using generative AI in digital marketing in a simple, easy to understand way. You're not given a previous examples to use, so you can't teach it your writing style, for example. That's called zero shot prompting. Not one of my favorites, I usually use the next technique that I'm about to cover. So the next technique is called few shot prompting. It's the one I use almost every single time because I wanted to have some context, some previous examples. So the difference between zero shot and few shot is with few shot, you give it examples of your desired output. So it has something to pull from and not just use what it thinks is best. So this is a really good technique here and it's called few shot prompting. Okay, here's an example. So blog post about social media marketing. Remember with the zero shot, that's all you gave it. With a few shot, you're gonna say, here's an example of a blog post about how a small business can leverage Instagram for growth. And then you could insert text from a previous example of something maybe you wrote, or this is an example of an article discussing the benefits of Facebook advertising for local businesses. And then you give it some example. So then that way he knows the writing style. He knows exactly the formatting of what you're looking for. That's the few shot prompting. And then the prompt would be now write a blog post about the latest trends in social media marketing for small businesses. So this is called few shot prompting or prompt priming. You give it some context. It has the example that you're looking to replicate. One of my favorite ways to do prompting inside of any model, especially ChatGPT. Okay, next on our list of the seven prompting techniques, we have role prompting. This is one of my favorites. 
if you give, again, this is referring to Llama 2 because, again, this is the Facebook guide, but remember, this is relevant to pretty much any large language models. If you do this role prompting, you will get more consistent responses when given a role. Okay, roles give context to the large language models on what type of answers are desired. So instead of saying explain the pros and cons, you say your role is a machine learning expert who gives highly technical advice to senior engineers, right? So this is basically setting up what's called role prompting, and then you follow up with your prompt. Again, one of my favorite things to do with ChatGPT is using this technique as the first part of a prompt. And in marketing and entrepreneurship, I have some more relevant examples. For example, as a social media influencer with a large following in health and wellness space, suggest creative ways to use Instagram for building a brand presence. Or imagine you are a successful entrepreneur who has built multiple businesses share the top five strategies for effective time management and productivity. So you see the role comes first, then the actual prompt of what you wanted to do comes second. And with all these techniques I'm sharing, you could combine many, many different techniques into the single prompt. It doesn't have to be choosing the role prompt or choosing the few shot prompting. You could combine these and do a sequence of prompts as well. Now, this next one is simple, but it's really powerful and it's really easy to implement. It's called chain of thought prompting. And this is a very popular prompting technique, again, across all the large language models. And you just need to add a phrase to get it to think step by step, okay? And it says significantly improves the ability for the model to perform complex reasoning. This is called chain of thought prompting. And basically this is all it says. Who lived longer? So here's just a simple prompt, but it says, who lived longer? Let's think through this carefully step by step. So this is the prompt. That's it. Just copy and paste this at the end of prompts that sometimes require a little bit of logic or a little bit of math, because that way it will just do the calculations in the background and give you a better response. It's kind of funny that this simple sentence based on multiple, multiple research from across all kinds of different large language models actually improve it. So it doesn't hurt to add this to almost every prompt that requires a little bit of reasoning. Next on the list is called self-consistency. So as I mentioned before, a lot of times a single prompt could result in incorrect answers. And this basically helps enhance the accuracy by letting it actually come up with multiple different answers and then choosing the best from its own generation. So the simplest way that I understood this is, imagine you're asking a group of experts the same exact question, and then they all give the answer and see what the most commonly agreed answer is. Let's say there's five experts, three of them give the same answer, and that's the one that's the best answer because most of them agree on that. This is basically what this type of prompting technique does. You ask the AI to give you several answers to the same one question, and then whatever answer that pops up more frequently or aligns more correctly, that's the answer that it will pick. So it's basically creating a panel of experts, answering you in multiple different ways, and then reasoning to choose the best one from its answer. Okay, so that's called self-consistency. Again, every example they have here is more for developers. So again, some of the examples I'm giving you I wrote it in the description below this video so you could kind of see a very specific normal non-developer answer if you're a non-developer. If you're a developer, obviously this is a very helpful document. I'll link this below and obviously all my text will be below as well. And then we have this one, Retrieval Augmented Generation. This is called RAG and this sounds a little bit complicated but it's actually one of the simplest prompting techniques. Really all you're doing is a lot of times, again, this is the case of building an application using a large language model, but a lot of times when using ChatGPT for research or really any other tool that is this AI large language model for research, you want very applicable and factual knowledge, right? You don't want to just to make up the answer or maybe the knowledge base that it has is not up to date enough. So a lot of times you need to give it external sources and it will go do that research. This is why I often recommend GPT-4, for example, or if you use Copilot, something that has up-to-date internet access. So when you're building these models, it's just telling you 
to have it look at an external source. So if I use a prompt like this, research the latest models of electric cars released in 2024, the normal training of GPT, chat GPT, just wouldn't have that information, right? But if you do this, usually it will just in the background do that research for you. So it says doing research with Bing. Bard obviously is gonna do that with Google and it's gonna give us an answer that is up to date. That's the whole concept of RAG, basically forcing it to do external research and not use its internal knowledge base because that could be out of date sometimes. So with the Llama 2 model, when you're building application, if you're a developer, you could then tap into external sources so it's not hallucinating or making up the answer because it just doesn't know that information. And you can see this is going to be much, much more up to date from 2024 where the training as I'm recording this of GPT-4 is not in 2024, it's in 2023. So it wouldn't know this information just yet. And OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, also released an official prompting guide that I covered in a different video. And that is also very useful, a little simpler than this and a little bit more applicable if you're using GPT-4. So I'll link that video next and I recommend you watch that next. And everything is in the description below this video. I will see you next time.